I'm with uh, Simon and Jane Berry in the uh, uh, wonderful Westminster Hub. Here's a little uh, view of it. And um, we've met up um, after a gap of a few months um, since when Simon and Jane have been away in Zambia. But it's time for an update on the Cola Life campaign. Um, it goes back a couple of years when we first started talking about this. Um, and now I see your fantastic update blog post coming through saying, yeah, well, we just pinned down this million pounds for this and million pounds for that. <laughs> so, uh, and Jane, I'm sure, has been uh, juggling the spreadsheets uh, on that. So where have you got to now? Well, a couple of um, uh, corrections, if I may, David. First of all, there were millions of dollars, not pounds. <laughs> and the other thing is we don't call it a campaign anymore. Yes. Um, because we're moving away from camp. Oh, in fact, we moved mm -hmm. away from campaigning about a year mm -hmm. or so ago, and we've, we've been trying to m make things happen on the ground. So, what have we been doing then, Jane? Yeah, well, also, it's only one million dollars, uh, <laughs> just the one. Um, yeah, we'll be able to announce very soon who, who the funders are. Uh, we decided it was time to, to, to shut up uh, shop in the UK, as it were, moved out of our house. Uh, gave away the dog, uh, went to Zambia um, because we knew that there were one or two interested funders that we could talk to while we were there. And uh, basically all the pieces of the jigsaw are now in place and we're hoping to start very early in the new year with the Code of Life trial, the first trial in Zambia. Can I just borrow the mic back again? Um, before we get overexcited about the trials and so forth, um, for new viewers, uh, remind people what the uh, Cola Life initiative, project, program is now. Um, have you got some kit there yeah, to show us? If you, if you hold the mic, Jane, I'll juggle this. Yeah, the basic idea is behind Cola Life is that you can get medicine, sorry, you can get Coca Cola virtually anywhere you go in the world, and everyone sort of nods when you say that. But one in seven children, on average, die before their fifth birthday in, in, in developing countries. Um, and uh, so we thought, putting those two together, well, why, if we can get Coca-Cola to these places, why can't we get drugs to these places? Uh, Taking it a bit further, why don't we make uh, package these drugs into wedge-shaped things like this, which were called aid pods by the BBC, uh, which clip down between the necks of the bottles in a crate. So you get um, ten of these packets um, in a crate, five, row, five rows of two, and inside is a kit to stop a child dying of diarrhoea. So you've got... Um, as a course of zinc tablets, uh, oral rehydration salts. So these are all over-the-counter medicines in Zambia, but they're not available in rural areas. Uh, and some soap to carry the sort of prevention message as well. So that's now called an ADK, or an anti-diarrhea kit. So that's the basic idea. And it says, um, it says something else on the side as, as well. Yes. Well, do you want to explain that, Jane? Yeah, we've been, um, as Simon just said, the uh, BBC christened this thing an, an aid pod. Um, and we think that's a really neat name, but we've got to find something that works, obviously, in the culture that, that we're working in. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of talk, obviously, in Africa around AIDS. And so we don't want this to be associated with HIV AIDS because at the moment these medicines don't address that. Um, so we've been talking to people who are sort of multilingual, of which there are, there are many, and we've got one or two very enthusiastic supporters, and one of them in, in, in particular, uh, uh, Kapumpe Musakanya, who's a, a local guy in, in Zambia, has come up with this name, uh, Kapakati, which works in two of the local languages. It either means very small packet, or it actually means uh, in uh, Chibemba, it means in the middle. So it means very small packet in the middle, and in Swahili, it also is, is resonant around the word for, for packet. So that's three languages it works in. So we, we might call it that. We're going to do some focus group work in the first six months of, of, the, of the project we've got launching in Zambia. Um, because we want to see, obviously, how local people react to the name and the shape. We don't know if this is going to be the color. Um, we're pretty sure uh, that we've got the contents there. But uh, we want to get people's reaction to what is essentially a new product that we will be asking uh, women in, in rural areas or carers of children in rural areas to, to, to buy in the long term. So it's got to work as, as a consumer product. Um, so you, you skipped quickly over the, well, yes, we sort of let the house and we did this, that, the other and so forth. Just before we get on to the journey of the uh, 
trials and the program. Personally, um, how have you handled this? Because uh, there was some money at the beginning, I think, from Unlimited, and then maybe a bit of a gap and so forth, and maybe there's some money coming in now. But it's been a pretty risky game, hasn't it? Yeah, well, it's funny, because when I set up the Facebook group three years ago, I didn't realise it was going to completely change my life. <laughs> I didn't realise uh, it was going to change my life either. I wouldn't have let him. <laughs> um, but two years in, it became pretty clear that we were either going to go down as the guys who created a lot of excitement and did nothing about it, or we did something about it. And really, there was no option but to do something about it. Now, fortunately, um, there was certainly nothing else I wanted to do at the time. And after a little bit of discussion with Jane... You've a lot of persuasion. Should, yeah, um, <laughs> came on board too. So, um, or came on board officially. You've always been there, mm -hmm. supporting in the background. So, uh, and then we got a, a, an award for. So, as soon as it became clear that I was going to stop working, James got the application forms out, and uh, we applied to Unlimited and got a level two award from Unlimited of fifteen thousand pounds, and that's basically kept our heads, heads above water while we visited Zambia to see if we could get a, a project together. And like you say. With the project coming together, we will now be paid to oversee that project. Not full-time, but for some other time. And, and people have been incredibly supportive. I mean, I worked out recently how much volunteer support we've had since we started uh, the whole, you know, Cola Life campaign come project about three years ago. And it's about... Eight hundred thousand pounds we've had in, in if, if you add it all up in, in, in people doing things for us for free pro bono advice we've had some of the world's top experts doing stuff for us for nothing um, and since we've been in Zambia we've got uh, we're living in somebody's house um, who is a, an old friend of ours from Zambia days um, you know who won't take any rent off us uh, so we're, we're, we're virtually living uh, you know there for free we've had people lend us their car um, in Zambia it's just People's support has been, you know, overwhelming, really. Coming on to the um, trial, I mean, the power of the Cola Life idea was, here's the bottles on this journey to the remotest um, parts of Zambia and other uh, countries, and here's this aid pod, which is designed to slot one into the other. Right, cracked it, but it's much more complicated than that, isn't it? So what are the issues you've had to work through and test out? Well, I mean, if you boil Cola Life down um, to the basics, it's essentially a huge stakeholder relationship management thing. Mm. And it's about trying to infuse and get unlikely alliances built between, you know, UNICEF and the biggest brewer on the planet. I mean, it's, uh, it's SAB Miller we're working with in Zambia who are the biggest brewer. Uh, they're the ones who bottle Coca-Cola, so we've got to get that uh, working. Uh, we're working with a local NGO who's going to do the social marketing. We're working with a mobile phone company who's going to do all the voucher um, redemption part of the system. Um, so, yeah, it's really a... And the Ministry of Health. Yeah, of Ministry course. of Health, yeah. So it's about getting um, all these different partners from different sectors to work together. Now, fortunately, in Zambia... Uh, they have a very, the government has a very positive attitude towards public private partnerships. In fact, they're struggling to find good examples. So we come along mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and, and fit in to the government strate strategy in that area. So, yeah, it's a lot more complicated than you think. And the other, the other thing is, although everyone gets really excited about these pods going into crates, um, there is more innovation in there, which I think is going to be actually more, more important than, than that. But it's this, it's this that gets people's attention. You know, things like voucher redemption on mobile phones. Um, Paraskilling uh, retailers in, in rural areas. For example, there's only, well, there's, there are fewer than 70 retail pharmacies in the whole of Zambia, which is an enormous country. And those are mainly in the main cities. There, there is no such thing, really, um, you know, as, as, as a retail pharmacy once you get out into the bush. And so what we do, effectively, if you think what a retailer does, they have commodities which they sell, and they sell the benefits that they say, buy this because of X, Y, and Z. But if they start doing that for a public health product, they essentially become, like Jane says, you know, agents of public health. Um, so that's an interesting area, I think. You um, used the phrase unlikely alliance, which I really, really like, and I think this might emerge later on, perhaps, for other <laughs> alliances that you uh, develop. But the alliance between um, Coca-Cola, 
and the big brewer and all of the other people in that has been quite a feat. What are the uh, kind of lessons of collaboration that you might share from that? Well, funny, the reason I'm sat here in the Westminster Hub is because they've given me um, a free membership because I wrote, uh, or Jane and I, in fact, wrote a manifesto for them, and that was all about unlikely alliances. And it sort of builds on the idea that, you know, if you're, if you're interested in innovation, innovation happens at the edge of, you know, organizations, the edge of networks. Well, take that one step further, and if you if that happens in different sectors and you overlap the edges, just imagine what a fertile ground that is for innovation in, 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 in that overlap. And that's where we think mm. we are with Cola Life. We've got the, the, the guys in the government who are prepared to take a bit of a risk. We've got the guys in the private sector who are prepared to take a little bit of a risk. We've got the guys in the NGO sector who are trying to... And we've got them all together in this little... Well, I suppose it becomes a, like a, a bendy-sided triangle all working together on this project, which is quite interesting. Terrific. And um, despite um, the million dollars emerging, I'm sure there's a lot more help needed. So um, mm. what can people do now? Well, now, that, good, good job you answered, asked that question, David, because we are in the finals of the Making More Health competition, which is a global competition. 470 people entered. We're one of the 13 finalists. And, um, and those finalists are now asking for votes. The top three will get $10,000 each. Now, although we've got a lot of money for the trial, that's all very ring-fenced, and we want to do development work and, mm -hmm. and be able to visit other countries and so on. So having $10,000 to spend on you know, development work would be brilliant. So go to colalife.org slash vote, and uh, it's about three clicks, and you're done.